welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Heba Abdel Ghaffour. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sakhir Palace Her Royal Highness the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women SCW, Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, who presented to His Majesty the judges of Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa Global Award for Women's Empowerment on the occasion of holding the committee's meeting in the kingdom. The meeting was attended by senior officials participating in the international conference on the role of women's political participation in achieving developmental justice, practical experiences and future prospects, which is held on November 14th and 15th. His Majesty welcomed the guests, hailing the positive results achieved by the Kingdom on the level of advancements of Bahraini women and his appreciation for national efforts exerted by all institutions at the forefront of which is the SCW, Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika, the Council's contribution achieved good results in highlighting the Kingdom's and Bahraini women's achievements who in turn contributed to the development of the national experience in all developmental fields. His Majesty the King affirmed that Bahraini women practiced their rights for many decades, adding that there are no regulations that obstruct these rights. He asserted his keenness on developing these rights. His Majesty expressed thanks for the judges' keenness on adopting the message of the project that began in Bahrain and their role in developing the award's work on the global level and promoting its goals that are based on justice and equal partnership between men and women, maintaining human stability and security. His Majesty also expressed pride in the constructive po political participation of Bahraini women in parliamentary and municipal elections. He hailed the increase of the number of candidates from 8 in 2002 to 44 in the upcoming elections. His Majesty expressed appreciation for Bahraini women's keenness on exercising their political rights. His Majesty said that the citizens' eagerness to participate in the upcoming parliamentary and municipal elections is a source of pride and is evident of the spirit of patriotism the people of Bahrain enjoy that enables them to develop their country. His Majesty the King noted that this election is regarded as a new point in the Bahraini political history to achieve all aspirations, wishing all success in accomplishing greater achievements in the framework of national unity. His Majesty also wished the participants in the international conference that hosted global leaders and personalities, pointing to the importance of such conference, especially that the objectives of this event are aimed at supporting national and international efforts to sustain the advancement of women in the political field. His Majesty the King said that the citizens' eagerness to participate in the upcoming parliamentary and municipal elections is a source of pride and is evident of the spirit of patriotism the people of Bahrain enjoy that enables them to develop their country. His Majesty the King noted that this election is regarded as a new point in the Bahraini political history to achieve all aspirations, wishing all success in accomplishing greater achievements in the framework of national unity. For her part, Her Royal Highness the wife of His Majesty the King expressed appreciation to His Majesty for his constant support of the Supreme Council for Women and the Women Movement in general in the Kingdom. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa visited yesterday Isa Air Base and upon His Majesty's arrival, he was received by the BDF Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmad Al Khalifa, Defense Affairs Minister Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmad Al Jalahma, Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Dia bin Saqar Al Nuaimi, Royal Bahrain Air Force Commander, Second Lieutenant Sheikh Aisha bin Rashid Al Khalifa and a number of senior officers. His Majesty was accompanied by his 
personal representative, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Majesty expressed appreciation for the efforts of the Royal Bahrain Air Force members in defending the country and the security of the region. The commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command, commander of the Fifth Fleet, Vice Admiral Scott Cerny, showed His Majesty the F-35 American fighter jet in the presence of the U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain, Justin Sebrill, and U.S. Military Attaché Colonel David Wallen. His Majesty the King was briefed on the jet's high capabilities, which is considered one of the best and latest fighter aircrafts in the world. His Majesty also witnessed an aerial show of the aircraft. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation to the U.S. Ambassador and the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command for the invitation to view the fighter jet, hailing its advanced capabilities, which reflects the development of American technology. His Majesty praised the historic and strategic cooperation between the two countries, which is continuously developing as partners in ensuring the security of the Gulf and performing many duties and joint tasks for the security of the region, combating terrorism and protecting shipping routes and international trade. F-35B Lightning Aircraft. Your Majesty, I would like to present to you Commanding Officer Lieutenant Colonel Kyle Shoup, who will give a short description of the F-35B Lightning Aircraft, followed by an air display and ending with a static display. Your Majesty, thank you very much. Good afternoon, Your Majesty. My name is Kyle Shoup. I'm a Lieutenant Colonel, the Commanding Officer of VMFA 211, the Wake Island Avengers. The Kingdom of Bahrain has been a gracious host to our squadron and to the USS Essex. We are honored that you have taken the time to visit us today, and we're excited to have the opportunity to show us to show you the capabilities of this platform. The F-35 Lightning II is a fifth-generation fighter, combining advanced stealth with fighter speed and agility fully fused sensor information and network enabled operations. His Majesty the King praised the bilateral cooperation for its importance during the circumstances the region faces. He expressed pride in the ties between the two countries in all fields and the keenness of Bahrain and the United States to develop these relations. His Majesty expressed thanks to the 5th Fleet Commander and its staff.
His Majesty greeted the officers of the Royal Air Force of Bahrain and the U.S. Fifth Fleet officers. He expressed appreciation for all he witnessed during the visit, wishing everyone continued success. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Qudaybiya Palace a number of royal family members and officials, where His Royal Highness discussed with them a number of local affairs. During the meeting, His Royal Highness hailed the Bahraini citizens' keenness to intensify efforts to serve their country and strengthen its status in various fields. The Prime Minister expressed pride in the Bahraini people, adding that they are the most important elements that have succeeded in making the kingdom a model in the ability to make achievements. His Royal Highness added that the Kingdom of Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, is moving forward in the path of development to meet the aspirations of its citizens. The Prime Minister affirmed confidence in the community's awareness of its national responsibility, adding that it's capable to support the national march. His Royal Highness noted the government's keenness to continue working on various development projects in the Kingdom, adding that the implementation process process will be in accordance with the highest quality standards that meet the aspirations of citizens and provide them with a decent life. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Qurabiya Palace the Kuwaiti Ambassador to Bahrain and Dean of Diplomatic Corps Sheikh Azam Al Mubarak Al Subah. During the meeting, His Royal Highness affirmed the strength of the Bahraini Kuwaiti relations and the development they witnessed in various fields. His Royal Highness highlighted Bahrain's keenness to bolster these brotherly relations. His Royal Highness highlighted the course of bilateral relations and their development in various aspects, noting the Kingdom's keenness 
promised to reinforce brotherly cooperation with Kuwait, which is based on understanding, coordination and brotherly ties. For his part, Sheikh Azam expressed pride in the support of His Royal Highness of the Bahraini-Kuwaiti relations, which has become an example of distinguished relations and close cooperation. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Qudabiya Palace the sons and grandsons of Jasim Muhammad Murad, who were honoured to greet His Royal Highness. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister hailed the contributions of Bahrain in all fields, noting in this regard the exerted efforts of the Bahraini families in supporting the National March development. His Royal Highness expressed appreciation to the Murad family and all it has offered for the service of the country. For for their part, the family of Jasim Muhammad Murad expressed their thanks and gratitude for His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his keenness to communicate with the citizens, loading His Royal Highness's kind gesture to ask and reassure himself in regards to their father's health that comes as part of His Royal Highness's efforts to promoting the spirit of cohesion amongst the Bahraini community. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Qurabiya Palace a commercial and religious delegation from India, headed by the chairman of Ajmera, Rajan Khant Shamalji Ajmera. His Royal Highness affirmed that Bahrain has always been pioneering in interfaith dialogue, noting that the kingdom is keen on contributing effectively to bringing cultures and religions closer for the kingdom's firm belief in the importance of achieving world peace. He asserted that the outcomes has made the kingdom a strategic option for foreign investment, stressing that Bahrain and India represent two models for coexistence and religious pluralism that are based on a long history of tolerance. His Royal Highness welcomed the Indian investors' approach to increase their investments in the kingdom through constructive cooperation with the Bahraini private sector, affirming that the commercial relations between the two countries contribute to bolstering bilateral cooperation. He expressed satisfaction with the development of Bahraini-Indian relations, which reflects the deep-rooted historic ties between the two countries. He asserted that the bilateral relations have been established throughout the years and are based on solid foundations of respect and mutual keenness to build a solid cooperation that serves mutual interests. The delegation hailed the means of success for foreign investments the government provides under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, noting the Kingdom's investment activity and commercial movement that encourages investors to choose Bahrain as a platform for their businesses. The delegation also expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for the support the Indian community receives from the government under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, commending the kingdom's religious freedom and intellectual and cultural pluralism. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, SCW, Princess Tabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, received today at the Council's headquarters the judges of Princess Tabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa Global Award for Women's Empowerment, who are an elite of the diplomatic field, led by the UN Under Secretary General Dr. Fumzil Malambunuka. 
Her Royal Highness affirmed that the Global Award carries the Kingdom's message for the international community that women's topic is a developmental one. Her Royal Highness expressed thanks to the UN Women for their constructive cooperation in launching the award and activating its goals, hailing the efforts of the award judges and the UN Women work team in receiving participations and evaluating them according to the award standards. She hailed the programs and plans created to introduce the award to the international community. For their part, the judges expressed aspiration for assessing the results of the award, affirming that the award will be the best tool for promoting successful practices that enhance gender equality. These are awards on women's empowerment uh, in four categories, individual, private sector, public sector, and uh, private sector, public sector, civil society, and individual. And the winner in each category is going to get 100,000 US dollars. Uh, we had more than 1,000 entrants from all over the world. So the jury right now is trying to find a winner in each of the four categories and once we have been able to agree on the preferred winners we are going to visit in order to see if uh, what we see and what they are really doing is the same especially sustainability and impact of their initiative and then March next year uh, will be the awards. We have some fantastic applications from people working so hard for women's empowerment people working on everything from microfinance uh, through to fighting human trafficking of, of girls uh, through to cash transfers for women who are in poverty. So it's going to be very hard to choose because these are just such incredible efforts of people working to make lives better for women. Well the award is still relatively new uh, but I think it's a good initiative to try to um, identify experiences around the world whether it's of government, private sector, civil society individuals that deserve recognition uh, and that also will be interesting to be replicated elsewhere. As you know, United Nations Women has the He for She pledge. What I saw here is that there is the organic She for She. So what we've seen here, or what I saw, is that women really support each other and they play such a significant role in the family and, and help each other. I guest lectured at the Royal University for Women, which is an, such an important initiative in this region. So I would say that Bahrain actually serves as an incubator for the region to show how at the government level and, and the societal level, how do we empower women and to prove that it's actually possible. First Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Honorary President of the Bahraini Mixed Martial Arts Federation and Higher Committee President of Brave Combat Week, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa witnessed the first day of the Mixed Martial Arts Tournament. His Highness cheered on the members of the national team in yesterday's fights as the players showcased their best performances that resulted in their qualification for the second round. He affirmed that the achievements made by the Bahraini fighters reflect their high capabilities and their keenness to achieve the highest results in order to enhance the status of the kingdom in this sport. His Highness added that the first day witnessed a large attendance and the fighters competed with their highest levels to win the title. He expressed confidence in the fighters to make more accomplishments and reach a new achievement in this championship.
press conference was arranged by the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning to announce the decisions made to organize fishing and the protection of marine life in the kingdom. More in this report with Shoghan Mohammed. The Minister of Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning, Assam Khalaf, held a meeting with the editors of local newspapers, columnists, local press and media outlets to announce the details of the executive decisions to regulate fishing and protect marine resources. This step comes in implementation of the decision of the Cabinet in its meeting held on October 22nd to take the necessary steps to preserve the marine environment through a number of measures. The main purpose of, the, of these decisions is uh, to safeguard our marine life. Uh, the, main, uh, the marine resources, uh, as per the, the latest studies, had shown a um, 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 big reduction in, the, uh, in this field. Uh, our collective efforts through a number of government agencies, Coast Guard, uh, environmental uh, uh, environmental agency, uh, fisheries, uh, and Temkin, our collective effort to safeguard the uh, the marine resources, and and to establish a program to help uh, uh, safeguard our uh, main species, especially uh, the, uh, those that are favored by the uh, Bahraini citizens. Main priorities include reducing fishing effort levels in the marine environment and developing marine resources so as to prevent further deterioration of fish stocks due to overfishing, as well as expanding fish farming and encouraging investment in it as an economic and food resource. Well, the main decision is uh, that, the, that they're going to stop the trolling of shrimping and we believe that this decision is crucial to the marine environment and ecosystem in Bahrain. As we showed today that we showed that there is a significant uh, death of a lot of ecosystems uh, during the, um, the, the period of the trolling. We believe that uh, the side catching is going to be a lot less. We're talking with the shrimping, the 70% of the shrimping procedures of, of, of fishing, 70% of is bycatch. So this amount of bycatch is going to be stopped. This means that there is a lot of the species will, will continue growing during this period of time. And this is very crucial for us. A number of officials from the relevant government bodies attended the meeting to highlight the government's efforts in the implementation of the cabinet decision on the regulation of fishing and the protection of marine resources into effect. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shog Mohammed. The Sankad Manama Air Power Symposium MAPS 2018 took place at the Sofitel Manama under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and supported by the Royal Bahrain Air Force and the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunication. MAPS 2018 is the official conference of Bahrain International Air Show 2018. This year, topics were under the title of Air Power Applied in Network Coalition and Joint Environments. More in this report with Sara Lebrik. The second Manama Air Power Symposium took place on the eve of the Bahrain International Air Show 2018. It was attended by chiefs of air staff from around the world. Keynote speakers at the symposium included Colonel Al Warden, who as one of just 24 people to have flown to the moon, visits Bahrain for the first time and is part of creating new opportunities to encourage sustainable science, industry and business partnerships between Bahrain and the U.S. There's an old, what we call an axiom in, in, in the military, that he who controls the high ground controls the outcome of the battle. And there was a long time when everybody thought the moon was the high point of all high points. And my, my comment to everybody in the room was, uh, I've been there. Uh, I've seen the earth from there. I see how small and, and, and finite it is. But the moon is not high ground for anything because it's too far away. It's 240,000 miles and it takes it takes a finite amount of time to get anything from the Earth to the Moon or the Moon back to Earth. So it's not a good, it's not a military advantage. The symposium addresses the dynamic engineering challenges faced by all industries competing in today's global economy, particularly in aviation and aerospace. Low Earth orbit, or let's say near space, is where the military issues will come up over and over. And I also believe that space is probably not the best 
uh, uh, arena for that, because once you go into space and you go into orbit, your ground track is fixed. There's not much maneuvering in 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 uh, in near-term space, uh, and that's because it takes too much fuel to, to to change the trajectory. So I don't see it as a major issue. I think we're going to see um, air-breathing uh, hypersonic vehicles doing more. Uh, from that standpoint, then going into space. This is Sarah Al Break reporting for Bahrain International. Bahrain International Air Show is an industrially engaged biannual air show that gives aviation organizations a customized experience. It offers access to high-ranking officials and trade specialists inside the aviation network. The first was held in 2010 under the patronage of His Majesty the King and the event was acclaimed its prestige because of its high standards and unique atmosphere, putting it on the world map of similar shows worldwide. More expectations for the 2018 edition of Bahrain International Air Show in this report will start a break. Bahrain's biannual air trade show, the Bahrain International Air Show 2018, is opening its doors to decision makers, researchers, aerobatic enthusiasts, and pretty much the whole world. During the three days of the trade show, companies from aviation and aerospace professionals, as well as officials from different disciplines like engineering, airport management, and operations, as well as government agencies, will be there. The numbers that came out at the end of the 2016 air show are a testimony to the prime event that takes place in Bahrain due to its excellent location and its long-standing experience in exhibitions and display events. In 2016, a new record of total value deals signed during the event's three days was announced and was made during a press conference held on behalf of the Supreme Organizing Committee of BIAS by His Excellency Engineer Ahmed bin Kamal, totaling 9 billion US dollars, which is three times higher than the number reached at the previous edition. In 2016, in 2016, Bahrain welcomed 139 companies, which represents 60% growth since the inception of the show in 2010. In addition, 92 delegations participated, including 59 civil and 33 military, representing 34 countries. The exhibition hall was 47% larger than BIAS 2014, and in the 2018 edition, it is expected to be double as big. With different pavilions joining the airshow in 2018, the U.S. is exhibiting with 35 U.S. companies at BIAS 2018, most of whom are first-time participants. An inauguration of the first USA partnership pavilion with over 400 square meters in the exhibition hall, as well as 15 U.S. aircraft scheduled to take part in static and flying displays at the airshow. A gallery displaying the Bahrain-U.S. historic relations will be celebrated with a photograph tribute to the U.S. Fifth Fleet operations in Bahrain. And most importantly, Bahrain students and general public will have an opportunity to meet Colonel Al Warden of the Apollo 15 space mission. There will be a separate area for access to the public and one dedicated only to trade visitors. Initial numbers of participants and what countries are taking part in this massive air display and exhibition are already stated on the Bahrain International Airshow website www. BahrainInternationalAirShow.com. This is Sarah Break reporting for Bahrain International.